Remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Chainsaw Man Part 1 really had the potential to be good. The introduction of the anime and the continuation of my critique series reminded me of that. My first video was quickly conceived and were just my immediate thoughts on the manga after finishing it. My critique series brings up multiple points, but they're spread out over the grading of each chapter. So in this essay, I'm going to lay out the fatal flaws that are holding back Chainsaw Man as fairly as possible. Be prepared, because this one is one of my best essays so far. The power system of Devils is a unique one, but also a problematic one. Under this one flaw of an inconsistent power system are two subpoints. The first problem is the inconsistent use of motifs. Each devil is a blank devil, that blank being their motif. Their powers are often logically based around that motif. The Chainsaw Man devil can produce chainsaws from his body, the future devil gives future vision, so on. I have a little bit of leeway for how each motif becomes a power, but CSM sometimes abuses this leeway with powerful characters. Control Devil Its first power is to control people. That makes sense. But then she also has what the wiki describes as force manipulation. With this, she can crush people, cause internal damage with a glance, and shoot invisible blasts from her fingers. This doesn't make sense and is a problem. Why? Because the motif provided a limit and sense of scope for the devil's abilities. But when characters can do things unrelated to the motif, what's stopping the author from writing more characters that break their motif? That slippery slope leads to characters being able to do whatever without any foreshadowing. Additionally, Makima's force abilities are never foreshadowed and just appear as Deus Ex Machina's when they first show up. But if her name was the Control Devil and she suddenly used some controlling powers, it would have been foreshadowed and good writing. Next example, Darkness Devil. It can use force manipulation like Makima. It also has a blade of darkness that can be telekinetically controlled and has a bell that when rung will make the victim bleed out. How does that connect to darkness? Next, the Spider Devil. In Chapter 66, she was able to summon Makima to hell. What does summoning have to do with spiders? Well, Makima needed a way of getting into hell, so that BS was tacked on to spider. The Angel Devil is my last example. He can steal lifespans and create random weapons from them that sometimes have powers. How does this connect to angels? The second is the breaking of its secondary rule. One of the main things that makes the system a system is the fact that all devils are proportionately powerful to the fear of their motif. Evidence is in chapter 13 when Makima speaks about the gun devil and chapter 89 when Makima talks about the fear of Chainsaw Man. This is why the gun devil became so powerful. Guns started being bought to fight against devils and this raised the fear of them, allowing the gun to wreak havoc. That's from chapter 13. Cool. This part of the system plays such a major role in the story. It created the gun's tragedy and served as backstory for several characters like Aki, Kurose, Tendo, and the trio of brothers. Gun is also Makima's main objective making it the main group's main objective, making him the big bad until Makima collects it. With all of that down, it's evident that the fear factor of the system plays a major role in the story, so when the story breaks those rules, you now understand why it bothers me. Only some devils break this rule, but they are usually major players. The doll devil had an overpowered ability. This user could turn any human they touched into a doll under her control. Now any human that doll touches will also become her doll. Once turned into a doll, you can't go back. That's from chapter 59. Very powerful, but that doesn't match the fear level for dolls. You can't tell me that people fear dolls more than they fear chainsaws, so why is her power so broken compared to Denji's? The bomb and gun devils being stronger than a chainsaw makes perfect sense, but the doll doesn't. The doll was a major antagonist for an entire arc. Then there's the angel devil. He has broken abilities like absorbing the lifespan of anyone he touches, a 5 year spear that kills anyone it touches, and a 1000 year spear that one shot at chainsaw man. There's no way that people fear angels more than bombs or chainsaws, yet he has one of the most powerful movesets. Another example is Pochidon in his true form. He was the strongest devil and it took the four horsemen and all weapon devils jumping him to come close to defeating him. Chapter 87 There's no way the fear of chainsaws outweighs all other weapons and the four horsemen. Death is one of the four and should honestly be the strongest in the whole story. But that's not all. If fear is proportional to power, then Denji should have been getting weaker as more people began to support him. This happens to Pochita's true form in 89, but against the gun in 79, humans were literally asking him to save them and giving him their blood. Meanwhile, Gun Devil just came home from a killing spree, so Denji should have been completely outmatched, but he somehow wins the fight. This is a major moment in the story. Writing this is a problem if you're A, not willing to make Denji an antagonistic or fearful force, or B, not willing to make Denji solve his problems without his powers. For B, look at Star Wars. The dark side is clearly stronger than the light side, 
they have extra force powers that the light side doesn't have access to. Additionally, Luke only won against Vader in episode 6 once he tapped into the dark side, but he pulled back and decided to stay with the light. This didn't allow him to beat Palpatine directly, but allowed him to convert Vader to his side, and Vader took down the Sith Lord. Here, evil equals more power, but the hero decided to solve the problem without power. If Fujimoto wasn't willing to do A or B, he shouldn't have ridden in this part of the system. There's also the problem with contracts. Throughout the series, all contracts with devils have been, you give me something and I give you my power, from the devil's perspective. Aki sacrificed his lifespan for the curse. He let the fox eat part of him for the fox power. He let the future live inside of his eye for future vision. Santa Claus brought the darkness devil, Chainsaw Man, in exchange for some power. The problem lies in two of Makima's contracts. In 66, through Tolka, she offers all of herself to the hell devil to escape hell. How can a corpse make a contract? What does all of myself even entail? Her other contract is with the Japanese Prime Minister in 84. In exchange for working for Japan, any death Makima suffers will be transferred to a random Japanese citizen. How can one man offer the lives of others without their consent? And how do those rules align with the rest? The devil is supposed to give the human their power in exchange for a sacrifice, but here, the PM is making sacrifices and only getting Makima's help in return. And she's free to help out however she wants, seeing as she was allowed to kill the Vision members, try to kill the national hero twice, and try to kill an innocent civilian. She also gains near immortality from this deal. I should also point out that I only found out what the PM gained from this contract from the wiki. I don't remember the manga explicitly stating her side. You might argue that she controlled the Prime Minister into making a bad deal, but even the most similar contracts don't work like this, those being the US presidents with gun in 75, and the agents with hell in 83. They were straightforward, give and get. Give lifespan, get gun to kill Makima. Give lives of agents, get hell to kill Makima and put her in hell. Notice how both of the times where the system's logic was broken were for major moments in the story? Escaping hell and making Makima immortal. Throughout this whole section, it seems like CSM breaks its rules in big moments. The next fatal flaw is the handling of deaths. Here, I'm talking about the good guys dying. Before I explain how CSM misuses them, I need to explain to you what a good character death looks like. A good death can close off a character arc, having the target finally finish their arc right before dying. A good death can have a major impact on the characters that witness the death. A good death can be an epic send-off, one last blaze of glory to put respect on the character's name and reinforce their character. A good death can have a major impact on the setting, Deaths that have at least one of these from different manga are Haku, Zabuza, Itachi, Byakuya's Fake Out, Yamamoto, Unohana, Ace, Rangoku, Junpei, Kuwabara's Fake Out, and Yusuke's Fake Out. I say that CSM mishandles deaths because a lot of the deaths don't do any of these. They only serve to shock the audience. Here are some empty deaths. Arai, Fushi, Kado, Tanabe, Ando, Nakamura, Subaru, Kurose, Tendo, Kusakabe, Tamaoki, Beam, Galgali, and Aki. The only good ones I can remember were Himeno's and Powers. Nomo and the Division 2 Lieutenant almost had a blaze of glory sacrifice, but it was off screen and probably wasn't a blaze or glorious. All these wasteful deaths become annoying and feel like CSM is just trying so hard to be subversive. The next fatal flaw is the pacing. There are multiple examples where it's too fast or awkward. My first example is the Gun Devil's arrival. This arc has the main antagonist confronted and is only 9 chapters long. In one chapter, during the arc, Gun appears and kills tons of people. This is summarized in 4 pages. In the next chapter, Gun kills more people in summaries and Makima's fight against it begins. One problem, this fight is also summarized and the conclusion isn't even shown. It ends in this chapter. In the next chapter, Aki is the Gun Fiend, meaning his death was off screen. The primary antagonist was fought for one chapter with the conclusion being off screen and a primary character had an off screen death. Aki was the blue oni to Denji's red oni, yet his death is so empty. It doesn't fulfill a character arc because Aki's arc was him getting over his revenge, which he does in favor of his friends, but Makima takes control of him and makes him sacrifice his life anyway. It doesn't have a major impact on anyone who witnessed it because only Makima did. It wasn't an epic send off because it was off screen. It didn't have a major impact on the setting alone. Makima eventually turned the gun fiend into her puppets, allowing Denji to eliminate the gun. But even that impact can't be felt with how rushed the story is. Immediately after the gun devil is dealt with, Makima becomes an even bigger problem. All that rushing is in two chapters. In this chapter, 77, 
Denji and Aki begin fighting. They fight for three chapters, with Denji winning in the third. This was the only normally paced part, although the fight should have been longer, considering he took three to beat Doll and around seven to beat Bomb. Both are weaker than the gun, who's the primary antagonist. The next example is the Control Devil arc. In 83, Makima is attacked, Hell Devil is summoned, the real Chainsaw Man is activated, and he kills the Hell Devil in one shot. In 84, TSM is sent to Hell, fights several devils, and comes back to Victor. That fight is summarized. In 85, he kills Makima in one shot, and then the story decides to slow down for dark comedy with Kobeni. This lasts for most of 85 and 86. At the end of 86, Makima prepares to use all of her controlled devils. 87 and 88, he mops his competition. 89 has a short break before CSM sacrifices his life for Kobeni. In 90 and 91, Paro comes back and saves Denji. These fights are so quick and so many major events are happening in about two chapters each. The fight against Bomb took a whole volume. The entire fight during the hunt for Denji took about two whole volumes. Full CSM versus Makima and her puppets should be the biggest event in the story, yet it basically took two chapters. This fight had more combatants than either the Bomb fight or the Doll fight, and all of these combatants are super powered, yet it took two chapters. My last example is the final battle. The combatants size up at the end of 93. In 94 alone, Denji defeats all of the hybrids. In 95 alone, CSM fights Makima and loses. Then in 96, Denji sneak attacks Makima. Both of those phases, the hybrids and Makima, should have been several chapters of epic combat, but the story decides to make them one chapter each. This is a weekend CSM, since everyone loves him. Chapter 89 said so, yet he handles all of the hybrids in one chapter. Bleach was accused of rushing in the last arc, but it wasn't nearly this bad. Hero Academia is currently being accused of rushing in the last arc, but with what little I've seen of it, I can guarantee you it isn't this bad. The final fatal flaw is Denji himself. In my video on what makes a good character, I said that personality is the most important feature. Most of his personality is pretty enjoyable but there are two traits that stand out and harm his character. The first is his shallowness. It's hard to get behind a character whose motivation is purely erotic, like grabbing boobs or kissing a girl, and it's not like he improves. In part two, he stoops so low to let girls sit on him for money. I can't respect a character that doesn't respect themselves. The second is his obsession with Makima. His obsession with her leads to him literally acting like her dog at times and overall making terrible decisions. Additionally, his obsession with Makima makes no sense because he's logical everywhere else, Look at the start of chapter 43. His line of reasoning makes complete sense until he reaches Makima. He even called out Makima on her BS in the second chapter, but for some reason he reverted to being her dog. This overall shallowness and disgusting behavior leads into an even bigger problem. In my video on how to write a protagonist, I said that a good protagonist will promote the theme or start against the theme and have an arc that converts them. Because of the way Denji is, the story is very limited in the amount of themes it can express through its protagonist. If you look at Naruto, One Piece, Kenshin, Yu Yu Hakusho, Magi, and Fairy Tail, they all have executed such powerful themes through the words and actions of their heroes. Here are examples of events in each. Naruto vs Zabuza, Gara, Pain, and Obito. Luffy saving Nami, Robin, and Kami. Kenshin vs Shishio and Inishi, and his own character arc. Yusuke's character arc. Aladdin vs Dunya and Mogamet. Natsu vs Laxis. But Denji can rarely play that role, because of the way he's written. The only two times I can think of where he did something like that are in the Bat Devil and Bomb Devil arcs. For the most part, the themes aren't even executed through him because he's a poor medium for that. There's one more theme that he's able to strongly embody, and that's basically don't simp for anyone. At the end, he learns that the woman he was lusting over was just manipulating him and is a terrorist. This message is not only weak and unimpressive, but it's also poorly executed because Denji should have realized that he shouldn't trust her from chapter 2 when she treats him like a dog and gets mad. Additionally, Makima didn't do enough to make herself worthy of lusting over, weakening the execution of the theme. She put almost no effort into seducing him, which also weakens her role as the villain. In my video on writing a good antagonist, I said that the antagonist should embody the anti-theme. Makima doesn't even do that. She's just the subject of Denji following the anti-theme. It's like Ashalad in Vinland Saga. One of the anti-themes is Revenge is Bad. Thorfinn wants to kill Ashalad, meaning that he's the subject of Thorfinn following the anti-theme but he isn't actively promoting revenge. But at least here, Ashilad does a great job at giving a reason for him being the subject, because he killed Thorfinn's father. Makima doesn't do a good job at being the subject because she's just existing. She isn't tempting him into following the anti-theme. If Denji was a rational person that didn't lick anyone's boots, 
and Makima was this extremely friendly, charismatic, and seductive woman who showed immense interest in Denji, I don't know, maybe like Reize, then this would have been a much better executed theme. She would have been actively tempting Denji into following the anti-theme, which would mean that she supports the anti-theme, like a good antagonist. Her message would be, simping over me is good, while the theme would be, don't simp over anyone. In conclusion, the inconsistent power system, mishandling of character deaths, pacing, and Denji as a protagonist are the four fatal flaws holding down Chainsaw Man. If all four of these were fixed, I can almost guarantee that I'd really like Chainsaw Man. Want proof? Look at part 2. 106 is the latest chapter at the time of writing this. So far, Asa has been the protagonist and she's not only a respectable character, but also a perfect vehicle for telling a well-executed theme. The pacing has also been perfect, not too slow or fast. There have been no mishandled main character deaths or inconsistent powers yet. Chainsaw Man truly had the potential to be great. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.